Today I'd be doing a quick revision for chapter 7, which talks about circular motion and gravitation. The section will be talking about circular motion. Circular motion is when an object spins around a fixed axis of rotation. Now, physical quantities involved in circular motion. The first physical quantity is tangential speed, which is also called Vt. Tanja Vt is the speed of an object in, the, in a uniform path, which is tangent to the circle. Now, Vt is always constant, or, uniform, or we can call it uniform circular motion, UCM, and the more the radius, the more the tangential speed. The Vt always changes direction. That's Vt. 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 Now our second physical quantity is centripetal acceleration, which is AC. Now AC is the acceleration directed towards the center of a circular path. It is due to the change of Vt direction. Now in this lesson we have two formulas. The first formula is centripetal acceleration which is AC equals to VT squared over R, and our second formula is FC equals to M times A. Now what is A? A is VT squared over R, so our formula would be FC equals to M VT squared over R. Now let's try to solve a question. The question is, a 35 kilogram child moves with a uniform circular motion while riding a bike on a roundabout. The bike is 3.2 meters from the roundabout center and has a tangential speed of 2.6 meters per second. So our givens are 35, the mass, which is 35 kilograms, the radius, which is 3.2 meters, and the VT, which is 2.6 meters per second. We need to find the AC, which is which the unit is meters per second square. Now our formula is AC equals VT square over R. AC equals 2.6 square over 3.2. AC equals 6.76 over 3.2. And our final answer would be 2.6. 1125 meters per second square. Now let's try to find the centripetal force with the same givens. Fc equals m times vt square over r. Fc equals our mass is 35 times vt square is 2.6 square over 3.2. Fc equals 35, 6, 6 6.76 divided by 3.2. Fc equals 73.9375 newtons. Now don't forget to put the units, this is really important. Our second lesson will be talking about Newton's law of universal gravitation. Centripetal force holds planets together. Gravitational force is a mutual force of attraction between particles of matter. Now Fc and Fg are equal. Fc, which is centripetal force, and Fg, which is gravitational force, are both equal. And that is why the moon is balanced. The Fg will keep the moon rotating. The big G is constant, and is, which is always 6.673 times 10 to the power of negative 11. And the unit is n times m square over kilogram square. Distance and force are inversely proportional. However, mass and force are directly proportional. Now, the only formula that we'll be using in this lesson is Fg equals to G, m1 times m2 over R, and the unit is Newton. Now let's start solving a question for this lesson. The question is, given two objects of respective masses 200 grams and 350 grams, so our givens are mass 1, which is 200 grams, and mass 2, which is 
350 grams. Find the magnitude of the gravitational force between them if their centers are separated by a distance of R of 4 meters. So R is equals to 4 meters. Now, we're supposed to find the Fg. And the unit is going to be Newtons. Now, our formula is Fg equals to G constant m1 m2 over r square fg equals 6.673 times 10 to the power of negative 11 0 0.2 times 0 0.35 over 4 square now the reason we changed the mass from 200 to 0 0.2 was because we, ha we had to convert 200, 200 grams into kilograms. So the way we convert this is going to be 200 times 10 to the power of negative 3, which is equal to 0 0.2. And, the, and for 350, 350 times 10 to the power of negative 3 equals 0 0.35. Now let's get back to our question. Fg is equals to, our final answer is 2.91 times 10 to the power of negative 13 Newton. Our third lesson will be talking about motion in space. Now Ptolemy said the Earth is the center of our universe and the sun is revolving around it. Copernicus said that the sun is the center of our planetary system and the earth is revolving around it, which is the right thing. However, Kepler described the planetary motion in three laws. The first law states that the planets move around the sun in an elliptical path where the sun is at one focal point of it. The second law states that an imaginary line drawn from the sun to any planet sweeps out equal areas at equal time intervals. So, which means that area 1 would be equal to area 2, and T1 would be equal to T2. The third law states that the square of the orbital period, T square, is directly proportional to the cube of the average distance between the planets and the sun. T square is directly proportional to T cube. Now, the two formulas we'll be using in this lesson is... Uh, t square equals 4 pi square r cube over gm, and the unit is second. Now, when do we use this formula? It's when they ask us for the orbital period. The second formula is when they ask us for the orbital speed. We use vt square equals gm over r, and the unit is m meters per second. Now, let's solve a question for this lesson using the two formulas. Problem is, a given satellite orbits Earth at a mean altitude of 315 kilometers, and the mass of the Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms. The radius of the Earth is 6.05 times 10 to the power of 6. So our givens are, are the altitude, which is 315 kilometers, Mass, which is 5.97 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms, and the radius, which is 6.05 times 10 to the power of 6. Now, the altitude, we need to convert it from kilometers to meters. So, it's going to be 315 times 10 to the power of 3 meters. Now, to find the radius, the full radius, we need to add the rate, this radius with the altitude. So r equals to r2 plus altitude. r equals to 6.05 times 10 to the power of 6 plus 315 times 10 to the power of 3. The answer is 6.36 times 10 to the power of 6 meters. Now, our formula is t square equals 4 pi square r cube over gm. t square equals 4 times 3.14 square times 
uh, 6.36 times 10 to the power of 6 cubed over 6.673 times 10 to the power of negative 11 times 6.36 times 10 to the power of 6. T squared equals 5.91 times 10 to the power of 11. Radical, so T equals 768765.243 seconds. Now let's do it in scientific notation. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 7.68 times 10 to the power of 5 seconds. This is our final answer. Now, here we found the orbital period. Now to find the orbital speed, we should use the other formula with the same givens. Vt squared equals g m over r. Vt squared equals 6.673 times 10 to the power of negative 11 times 5.97 times 10 to the power of 24 over 6.36 times 10 to the power of 6. Okay, now Vt squared is equals to 626-38066.04. Put it in the radical so we get 7914.42 meters per second. Our final answer would be 7.914 times 10 to the power of 3 meters per second. This is the whole, the whole revision for chapter 7.